Uh, hi there, I'm Dave Scudis with the Mile High Flood District. I'm out here with Jeff Fisher, one of our construction managers. And we're here today because we are having to do a bunch of restorative maintenance work on a piece of infrastructure that's only around 25 years old. And a series of structures that go on downstream behind me here in the distance have all each failed in different in various ways. And we're having to spend two to three hundred thousand dollars out here to repair these structures and we want to use this as an example of why construction techniques matter why design matters and we're going to get into a few of the nuances of how this how and why this structure failed and what we're actually having to do to fix the issues so Jeff why don't you tell us what we're looking at here and why we're out here sure Dave um, the original construction of the drop structure did not have adequate cut off and so we found an existing concrete wall underneath the structure but it's not attached to the structure so there's a voided area between the concrete cutoff wall and the bottom of the boulders which is allows the water to go under the boulders instead of over the boulders so we're installing sheet pile cutoff retrofitting it into the structure ahead of the structure pz22 pile uh, driven 10 feet down and we'll re-grout this so that it is incorporated into the structure itself so it's all one mass and we're also going to be grouting uh, we drilled holes in the structure and we'll be grouting to fill the voids that are under the structure so that it's a competent uh, rebuilt structure that is back to the integrity it should be so a question for you why does it matter so much that the water goes over the structure rather than having some of it go under like we're seeing here there's a lot of reasons uh, you want it to, to function as it was designed and it's always designed to have the water to go over the top. One of the main things is that when it's going underneath it, it's undermining the structure so that the material that it's built on is slowly being pushed out of underneath the structure by the water movement and so it's actually undermining the complete drop structure. What we're standing on right now is just a boulder that's only being held by the grout around it and it's voided underneath it. So is you saying this could collapse underneath us at any moment? Um, yeah, I'll step away from that. <laughs> I sure hope not, I sure hope not. Okay, so what are some things we're doing to fix this issue? So we talked about uh, this sheet pile that we're driving up here. Now, was this, this sheet pile wasn't here when they first built this? No, no, it was not. And if you notice that we've gone so that we catch the top of the slopes. So we don't want to do all this effort and then have the sheet pile short of the structure so that it'll end round it and then again causing another erosion issue. So we drive the sheet pile where it's, it, it makes sense to get up high enough so that it's providing protection for the entire structure. Um, it's, it's thick st gauge steel. It's PZ22 is what it's, is, the, um, is how we order it. And these are cut to 10 foot lengths and driven. And so in this entire thing, these are all, this is not driven to grade. We have it set like this so that when we're ready to grout it, we, we turn the water off uh, and we push these down to grade and then we'll grout this in a mass. So you have these pushed up a little further right now and in order to help control water for a downstream structure, you are gonna have grouted today. Correct, we right. have three structures to grout and we're starting on a downstream, they're ready to grout. Unfortunately, we're now investigating on how we got a, a flush that's hit us. So we've canceled our grout for today to make sure that we do it correctly and we have too much water today so we're we're not doing that operation. so you guys were ready to go about an hour ago and then there's this lake upstream we suspect they opened up a slide gate or something and just, just un unwittingly flooded out our construction area yes so tell me what's going on what you can see beneath our feet here so you can see the volume of water that's behind the sheet pile it's we left one piece down to to give relief so it can direct the water and then it's you can see it's flowing completely under the structure there's so much water here but we're standing dry, high and dry on top of the structure which normally would have water flowing on top of it yeah and what's interesting right beneath where jeff and i are standing it's just short of looking like a toilet bowl for where uh one of the main voids starts right underneath the structure and the water is disappearing underground and then it pops out down at the base of the structure way further down. So Jeff, why don't you tell me what some of these core holes are that we've got here. So as soon as we exposed the problem, we realized that we had a void under the structure. 
So we core drill holes to find out where, try to figure out where the voids were and where the water's flowing. And so this is the first hole we cored. And from the bottom of the grout to where the dirt is, is about this much of a, of a, of a void where the water's flowing through it. So it is a, a big void in this section in the center and as we move up here is all voided so there's the water flows you can almost hear it sounds like it's a cavern under there or like somebody going to the bathroom maybe it kind of sounds like that yeah. or a cavern <laughs> <laughs> or a cavern <laughs> uh okay so we have so we have a uh, core holes drilled here so then we can inject grout underneath here to yes. fill in that void yes so we're gonna have to have concrete trucks driving up in here to do that are we gonna have to have a pumper truck for that or yes and we drilled um six inch holes so we can get a pumper truck hose down there we'll use a reducer with a four inch hose and we can slide it as deep as we can get it into that void and we juice up the um the grout mix we use so that it's a flowable material we we have a slump of five to six inches so it's really soupy and so we'll do this operation first and then we always monitoring downstream to see if we can see the grout at the end of it and we know we have it sealed off and then in a separate operation the same day we will do the face of the structure, but we'll do it in a drier grout. We'll use something more like a, four a maximum four slump grout. And that will give us a good seal up front, and that flowable grout will hopefully take care of that cavern, and we have the structure supported again with grout. You sound like you've done this before, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, th this is uh, pretty common, and I understand there's a lot that goes into these structures, but if there's one thing that just keeps showing us is that cutoff is critical, in order for the structure to function correctly over the long period. I think this was built, the water was flowing over it, but water finds the path of least resistance. It found that void and slowly just worked over years of removing that soil underneath it. Yeah, and like I, I said earlier, these structures were built in the early 90s, so here we are around 25 years later having to spend two to three hundred thousand dollars in taxpayer funds to, to come back in and fix this. Uh, so tell me about this boulder you're standing on, something else you noticed. So urban drainage, we have very uh, specific specifications on what type of rock we want to use on these structures and it's granite is basically so. And the reason we want that is because in this environment of free falls and we're down in the creek, it's a very brutal environment to, to, for all the materials. So we use the, the the, the strongest material, which is granite. This you can see is not granite, it's some type of shale. And over time it is fractured and is breaking apart. And it's in different rocks have those uh, problems. It's not bad enough to remove everything, but in, if we're gonna spend the money, we wanna spend it wisely. So we wanna use the best material and it's locally mined gr uh, granite that we're using in our drop structures at Mile High. So it seems to me here we had a design issue with probably not properly designing the cutoff wall. We had construction issues with not sealing the cutoff wall and with the material selection with the boulder that we're standing on right here. Uh, how about the grout, grout connect connection uh, to the boulders? Do we see any issues with that out here? We do see issues with it. Uh, when w One thing is when the uh, rock overhangs another rock. You can't get the grout in those areas. So if if you have a rock and then you have another one with a little lip, you can't get that grout in there and it's critical to get grout around the whole thing. And you can see by our core, this is the actual core that we took out. We have a good cross section of grout here and I think that's what's saving the structure from, from collapsing. From so, collapsing underneath our feet as yeah, we're standing here. Yeah, I think this is what holding this up right now. <laughs> Except for this piece we're holding on to right now. Yeah, we'll stay away from the hole. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it really, I think they did a, an adequate grout job, but there's a lot of areas where uh, this would not be acceptable for, urban, or for mile high um, when we would be inspecting it. We want to make sure we get that thickness of grout minimally, but we want to make sure we encompass the entire boulder structure and have it thoroughly grouted every boulder every rock yeah and there's some places where and right here is an example where i can stick my hand in there and I'm, I'm hesitant to stick my hand in there too far for fear of something in there that wants to bite me but there's a there's a gap between the boulders in there that i'm sure goes through the full depth of the grout and you just don't even have any grout uh in this spot right here and you yeah. know it's kind of jeff mentions you know maybe that's okay for a while but over time over a decade or two the mother nature's going to eat away at things like that and eventually we're gonna be out here having to deal with the problem. 
And one other um, observation as far as the grout, to me it looks like that they let the water get on the structure too early. Because if you'll notice, you see a lot of the aggregate of the grout on the surface and it seems like the paste has washed off of it. So we like to cover our structures once we grout them and let them cure before we let the water back on it. There seems to me that some of this spalding we're seeing is that the water was put on too quickly, allowed on the grout too quickly, it washed the paste off and then it's starting to pop with some of the surface grout. So that's another construction method that we make sure that we do it in the dry and that we keep the water off it as long as possible so that it has a chance to, to, to cure. Because typically these get a broom finish and even on the grouted areas, uh, some sort of finish where it definitely has a smooth, maybe a broom finish on the top. Um, and, 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 and it's very critical that you have somebody out here during that operation because unfortunately people will to use too much water to get it washed off and they start pouring buckets of water on the surface. That could have happened in this situation. Nobody was, we weren't here this when it was built. But that's why it's so critical to have somebody here during that operation to make sure that they control the water being used on finishing the grout. Because yes, we want a nice clean rock at the end of it and we want it somewhat of a finished look, but we don't want a troweled flat look. We want a rough broom finish. And, and, and really take care not to use a lot of water. Yeah, because we need to clean off the boulders for one, because you don't want grout on the boulders permanently, but it sounds like they maybe went a little too far with some of this with what you're seeing here. Uh, how long do you typically keep the flow from the creek off of a newly grouted structure before you will turn the creek back and let it flow over the structure? Uh, sometimes it's not a luxury, but at, at minimum we like seven days. So we put uh, visqueen or plastic over the structure, particularly where the flow is, is to make sure that it is not touching the, the grout for, uh, for at least seven days as uh, typical. Okay, okay. Very good. And just to show you guys an example of how deep this void goes, I'm going to show you how tall this plant is, which is probably a good five feet tall. I'm about six feet tall myself. We'll just call it six feet. Uh, we'll show you how far down this void goes. So here it's sitting on the ground, and here I'm gonna shove this down into the void, and I'm gonna have to crouch down here, and you can see that that's how far down that void goes just in this one spot. So Jeff, anything else you think, any parting thoughts you think we need to share with our viewers here? Um, the lesson we always learn from this is that cutoff is the most one of the most critical components of drop, drop structure construction and also uh, to have a competent person out here observing the construction so they're making sure that the design intent is followed through construction and if that is a, uh, if that does happen chances are we won't be back here doing this type of work it's very good parting words, Jeff. And I'd also add that um, this becomes less of a risk and less of a concern with the shorter the drop is. I think the drop that we're looking at here is maybe only three or four feet tall. And uh, we're having to spend a lot of money out here to address this issue. So cut off, cut off, cut off. Shorter drops are better and lower maintenance in the long run because they have less risk of this kind of issue because the water doesn't have to drop as far. Uh, so we're going to show you some other construction footage of this site and, and uh, we'll see you next time.